Goodbye, Peru. Hello, Bolivia. Our Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, fourth South American country. We're so excited to enter today. We're heading in at Copacabana on Lake Titicaca, and we really haven't checked out Lake Titicaca yet. We heard that it's best over in Bolivia, and we're excited to head in. We are going to miss a couple of things about Peru. We really, really loved the nature and the amazing ruins that they have here. Specifically, all of the hikes that we did in the Sacred Valley and El Salcate. Just amazing mountains in Peru that hopefully we get to experience again in Bolivia. But honestly, it was pretty hard whenever we went out to eat to find some veggie food for me to eat. The waiters just kind of laughed at me, which was super annoying. So hopefully they don't do that in Bolivia. In Bolivia, we're super excited to see the hoodoos outside of La Paz, La Paz in general. And then also down to the Salar de Uni. As US citizens, we only have one month in Bolivia and the visa costs $160. Oh. So <laughs> I guess we're pretty lucky because this is the first country that we've had to pay for a visa like that. So we, I really shouldn't complain too, too much. But <laughs> we are pretty fortunate to have such a strong passport. With our route right now, it is looking like we might be able to make it to Chile for around my birthday to go skiing, which I'm super stoked for. But yeah, Bolivia has subsidized gas. So the gas prices are super duper cheap and Peruvians, Chilean and Argentinians found out about this and started heading into Bolivia to buy gas, which made the government kind of upset. So they put a tariff on the gas for tourist cars. Our gas is like four times as much as Bolivians pay for gas, but it's still supposed to be cheaper than Peruvian gas, which is honestly very expensive. I think it's like $5 a gallon right now. We have heard you can haggle or bribe the, the gas station attendant to get a, medi a medium price between the Bolivian and the foreigner price. <laughs> the exchange rate for Bolivia is 688 Bolivianos to one US dollar. Well, we've heard that this should be the easiest border crossing yet here in Copacabana from Peru to Bolivia, so wish us luck. It all, this border crossing only took Rob 30 minutes. We're really happy that he's ahead of us so that he could give us all the insight to what the country has been like. He's already in the Salar de Uni, which is a huge salt flat we're super excited to check out. We're already stamped out of Peru. It took so little time, man. That was only like a second. It just made us pull down our mask. So now we're gonna head over to the other side of the uh, street and cancel out our TIP. Which is the paperwork for the van. Hurry, we only have an hour left. Well, we got our TIP canceled out of Peru. And now we're heading to Bolivia. Okay, so we're heading to the Bolivian migration. This might be a little difficult because of the visa payment. So it wasn't as easy as we thought it would be because we're from the US. We walked up to the counter and they told us we need all these papers and where's our declaration? Honestly, I haven't even, I, I don't think that this was on any website. You have to like come to the copy place next door, fill this out, take a picture print that out put it on there they have to print out a bank statement they have to see our yellow fever vaccine they have to have copies of our passport and then again $180 they also want to have a reservation which is just so silly to us because we obviously live inside the van and other countries they just accept that you have the temporary vehicle import permit and they will accept that as your reservation and how long you're going to spend in the country as well but this country they want a reservation for a hotel and then also how we're going to leave bolivia like a flight back to the u.s and we're not going back to the u.s we're going to drive to chile so it's like that was terrible. Okay, well, I finished paying for the visas, and I guess Danny is done with the aduana. Are we done? Yeah, we're good. We're in Bolivia. We're in Bolivia! We Woo! did it. Oh 
Honestly, with no help from anyone else, that was ridiculous. Here we go, driving in. Can't believe we got it done. That was really intense, honestly. Trying to get that all done in time. This border crossing was so absolutely ridiculous. On the Bolivia side, one thing after another, they told us what we needed, and when we gave it to them, they all, we also needed other things that wasn't on the list. It was just not a very smooth border crossing. The people weren't helpful until we told them, you're being very unhelpful. <laughs> Even whenever I tried to pay for the visa, they rejected a bunch of my bills. They said that there's stains on them, and really they just looked like normal US bills. So luckily they did have a credit card machine I could use. The TIP was very simple getting into Bolivia. Danny got that done very quickly. At this point, at least we're here. <laughs> we started at 5.30 Peruvian time, but we changed time zones whenever we crossed into Bolivia. So we ended at eight o'clock, which is basically the time that they close. Luckily, we got through though, and now we're able to explore another whole country for the next 30 days. So last night we basically just found a spot to stay next to the water, but it was super beautiful and free, which was really nice to save some money after spending $160 each to get into this country. Today is a new day. We have met some very friendly Bolivians. There was a woman last night that tried to help us get our SIM card chip, but it turns out that all of the smaller stores run out of the best one, which is Entel in Bolivia. It just has coverage all over, and as long as it's not Claro, I'm okay with it. <laughs> We're going to the big Entel store to, to get our SIM cards, and we already got the prices. It is seven to one for Bolivianos to US dollars. The one that we're going to get is 13 gigabytes with 15 minutes of calling for 100 Bolivianos, which is $14. So it's about a dollar and nine cents a gigabyte, which is pretty great. I mean, it's not as good as like some other places we've been. Compared to the US where it was almost $3 a gigabyte, this is pretty good. And after we get the chip, we can buy some more gigs at any little bodega, little store on the corner. They all recharge your Intel, so it, whenever we run out of 13 gigs. Uh, 13 gigs sounds like a lot, but when you go home, you don't really realize that you're on your Wi-Fi. And maybe 13 gigabytes would last you a long time, but since we're never on Wi-Fi, we're constantly using Google Maps and we have to upload videos on it, it doesn't go as far for us. So a dollar a gig is pretty good. We've been checking out Copacabana today and we think we found a pretty good tour for tomorrow over to Isla del Sol. What we want to do is walk from one side of the island to the other, which doesn't seem to be too hard. It's only about five miles. No one visits the, uh, the north part of the island too much, so it'll be interesting for us to be able to make this journey. A couple years ago, they actually closed off this walkway. They couldn't agree upon a tariff to walk across in the com within the community. But now it seems to be okay, and they're letting tourists pass through, which is really fun for us. So we just wandered up this beautiful little mountain here, Cerro Calvario in Copacabana. And this is another touristy attraction. It's it got the perfect view of Copacabana and the little marina that they have over here. But walking up, there are steps, so it, it's not too hard, but it does get a bit steep. And we're going to take the off-road <laughs> way down, which is a little bit more deep, less marked. Unfortunately, I think we lost a little bit of our acclimatization. We're pretty high up here at the highest, largest navigable lake, navigable lake in the world. But since we went to the Amazon for a week, we are able to sleep okay, but when we climbed this mountain, it was a little difficult to breathe. So we have to work to get that climatization back. We're not going down for a very long time. La Paz is the next city that we're heading to, and that's also very high. So it should be easy for us to get accl uh, acclimated once again at these super high Andes mountains. So far in Bolivia, it seems that people have been super nice to us. If they don't have something and you ask them for it, people have gone out of their way to help us find where to get that thing. And for the Isla del Sol, 
we also asked if somebody did can come with us and she can so good news because she definitely could go on a five mile hike especially after uh, all those driving days and a border crossing it's gonna be the perfect way for all of us to unwind after the sea of paperwork we just went through so to go to Isla del Sol and back it should be 50 bolivianos which should be about 14 bucks so not too bad coming up on this cool hotel that has every room is like a different shape and like one of them is a shell one of them kind of looks like a spaceship it looks pretty cool and very classy done and on Google it says that it's $50 a night to stay there. Where is the line between dreaming and feeling blue? It's four o'clock in the evening. I haven't left my room, but the truth is. Thank you guys so much for heading into Bolivia with us. We are so excited to check out this new country together. Make sure to share this video. We really appreciate your support. We'll see you guys next time.